So, you, the pilgrim, stand in the middle of the dirt road face to face with the tall humanoid blot, the supposed Probeth of old Deosia. The wind howls, the clouds lazily wade through the sky, and your companions in the cart wait, uh, but not a single sound escapes from any of them. Even Butterscots and Efficiency stand still as statues. The tall humanoid blot stares deep into you, the ring, uh, Pavita's ring in hand, simply sitting there, uh, the single red eye darting between you all while its body remains planted, with only the only movement being the viscous liquid dripping down its sides. I believe Fritz is... Are you carrying me right now? I I hope I I'm think, not misremembering. I think Word is on the cart. Or yeah, I thought okay. you were on the cart. I thought you were yeah, on the cart. Yeah, that makes more yeah. sense. It, I think you, like, you have, like, how many levels of exhaustion now? Three. <laughs> three. All three Jeez. out of six, but yeah. Um, if I recall last time, uh, Lyra, like, had, uh, like, said that it was the Probeth, and then it just kind of beamed information into our brains. Is that is that what was going it on? It triggered something in the blot that uh, made Lyra experience a uh, sort of, kind of, uh, what do you call it, sensation similar to what you did, Buck, back on the boat that you were traversing yeah. to Nuba Sky. Very similar, but this one not causing her psychic pain like it did to you. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Yippee! Yay! <laughs> it likes me. <laughs> Alright, then you, you talk to it, then. It's not... I... Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm um, not entirely sure what our aim is here. What, what would you have us do? You're saying this to the, uh, e the Prabhath? Yes, the to the Prabhath. I... A wish for justice. I wish for recompense. The tree must fall. Mm. I want you to see. Then show us? The hearts. I need them closer well i'm down to at least get closer with mine <laughs> i'll get closer with mine i mean like <laughs> the people who we're apparently not supposed to have the hearts anymore anyways you know we're we're not even pilgrims at this point <laughs> we've been oh yeah so... it's true we, we do have the the best plausible deniability of like yeah it was crazy we got mugged by the blot <laughs> This is just some junk that I have now. <laughs> uh, I'll get closer with... Um, I have uh, one of them, I know. Um, uh, I have Elias's heart and I my have inventory. Sergei's heart and my inventory. Give, give me one of them. I don't want to lose three hearts. That's my inventory says I have Cecilia's heart as well. Uh, if that's correct, then I can give that to Fritz. I know I have a heart. Let me double check. Well, Word um, had the ring, which was um, Pavita's heart, so you would have... Right. Like... You could. You probably had Cecilia's. I think Lyra had two. Yeah. Well, oh, I might have given you one of the hearts. Yeah. I, so if you want, Fritz, you can hold on to Cecilia's. Yeah. Let me. Ho I just don't want to lose all the hearts at once. So could I hold on to one? Yeah. Oh wait, no. I have Cecilia's heart. I know. Okay. I great. Let me get it off my. Oh yeah. You know what? It's listed in my inventory, but the quantity is listed as zero. I should have checked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, rookie D and D mistake all there. Good. So yes, Buck and Oh, Lyra. I also have Sergey's heart. Huh? Oh, I I know for a fact I have Sergey's heart. Um, Apparently, maybe... I had Sergey's heart. We're inventory duping here, guys. This is a real <laughs> good speed running strat. Oh, Todd, not again. <laughs> we double, can give hearts to the Prabhat that have plenty left over. Damn. I have three of Pavita's rings. I no clipped into. The <laughs> I wasn't expecting you guys. I wasn't expecting <laughs> you guys to find the dupe glitch. <laughs> should I should I get rid of Sergey's heart, or do you want to give it to me? I'm gonna get rid of Sergey's heart by giving it to the <laughs> the Prabhat. Are you? Hmm. Well, I just want to get it closer okay. to him. I'm standing close. I'm not giving it to him, but I'll. St I mean, does okay. he want us to? All right, okay. I'll delete it out of my inventory then. Yeah, ho let me hold on to my inventory, and then if I if it gets taken or stolen or I lose it and it gets destroyed, then okay. you can blame me. I mean, I've mm. done it before with the cart. My heart was the cart, and it got oh, destroyed. Buck. <laughs> oh God! So, Buck and Lyra, as you get closer to the Prabath, um, with the hearts, you see that his form kind of shifts very drastically as if he is being bent and and pushed and battered by forces unknown and huh. 
goes back to a neutral vertical stance and you can see that he starts to look more like a proper humanoid. The viscous fluid flows slower. Something akin to a humanoid face starts to appear. Something on the sides of the head look like ears. Oh, God. Oh. We're putting him back together like the Iron Giant. <laughs> the hearts are a part of him. Maybe if we give him more, he'll get a character portrait and we can all marvel at how hot he is. <laughs> yeah! yeah! Oh, <laughs> that's our goal. One. <laughs> just as soon as you do, his voice starts to speak in a more typical tone and, and less kind of huffed breaths between them. Come with me. I will show you. And he starts to head north, off-road towards some kind of woodsy areas. And as the cart starts to follow slowly, you just hear, you hear Jade just kind of whisper, I hope you all know what you're doing. Me too. There's not exactly training for this sort of uh, conundrum in uh, pilgrimage in all the times I've done it. That's beginning to feel very intentional. It's not like we've had that grace in any of our previous situations. Oh boy. So, Whoa, the world map time. Yeah. You guys start to head off road for nearly an hour where you have a little bit of downtime if you so wish to converse between each other. I will definitely Wait, do you take want a rest. Yeah, I'll take Does a short rest. Does that count as a short rest? <laughs> it you may take a short it's rest an hour, if you still yeah. wish. I can talk during that and do small tasks, I think, as a part of the mechanics. Wow, I truly used almost all of my hit dice. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Seven Yeah. Wow. I think I need. How do you reduce exhaustion? Is it one long Full rest? Long rest. Yeah, per, one per long yeah. rest per exhaustion. Okay. Uh, you need to be a little sleepy, sleepy little boy. Yeah, per one. Uh, <laughs> so You're a tired little baby boy. <laughs> Provided that I eat and drink. Mm -hmm. I sup and be nourished. I kind of like that. That means that you can slowly wither away and sleeping doesn't regain your exhaustion. <laughs> Pretty fucking tragic, but cool. Yikes. Yeah, I'll take a little nappy nap if anyone wants to talk to me, but I'm just gonna take a short rest as well, I think. Okay. While on the way, um, and you're taking mm. your little nap word, um Torellin actually kind of pokes you a bit. Uh, what? Um uh, I first wanted to thank you for all of you. And he kind of looks over at Buck as well. I... I... We didn't mean to... A, a word. A, after you gave your speech of encouragement, we were all ready for a signal, but a few of the prisoners, they... They just wouldn't listen to us. They, they seemed far too willing to fight the guards, and... I, I don't know why... We didn't have enough time to prepare for what they were doing. We didn't know our enemy either. I feel like it was a losing fight by the time we walked in. We should have gotten here sooner. We should have tried to come to Trevisetta first, but we didn't know. No, no, it's it's all right. That's exactly my point as well. I, We all knew that we weren't prepared, and yet a couple of the prisoners, I don't know why, they, I didn't recognize them. They, Perhaps they were new prisoners just shipped in, but we were all no. ready to wait for your next command, but they, they just went in themselves. Well, that's a fun tactic. Unless everyone else here is uh, equally versed when it comes to rebellion tactics. The one way to put it down is to pretend you're a part of the rebellion and flub it up. You think there might have been foul play? Always. From everything we've seen with these people, that is the only type of game they play. Certainly in this case. We didn't have all the information we needed, and... It's not like we things were going to go the way that we wanted to 100% or anything like that. I just appreciate that you guys did what you could and are sorry for the situation. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It was good to have some people behind our backs. But I think our goal now is just to level the playing field. 
we need to get some information that they don't have. And that's what we're doing here now. And as he says that, he gestures over to uh, Law District or, uh, come on, what's her name? Uh, Jade. Jade. Jade, yes. Jade. It's like yeah. Jade, but with a yeah. soft sound. He gestures to uh, Jade in saying Jade, that. mate. If they play dirty and they keep secrets, then we need to uncover ones of our own that they don't have. I worry the roots of this one run very deep. Hmm. Um, I just gotta ask. Um, That's our shot. Uh, word, Lara Fritz. What, what is our plan now? I mean, we're not pilgrims anymore officially. Um, are we not pilgrims anymore? We need to know what's going on. Well, I'm not entirely sure that Lord Tejero has the authority to declare that, but I'm beginning to worry that the pilgrimage itself grows in tainted soil. We may need to reassess, but we don't have all the information we need. And what we've just learned is that... We have nothing to gain from being pilgrims right now. Well, true, but what we've just learned is that we can't win if we don't know what we're fighting. Word kind of genuinely reassess, like reevaluates himself and Ooh. just kind of speaks up. Then the first thing we have to do is learn. Yes, everything I think we that's can. Correct. But even, I mean, even if we learn that this has all been some kind of ruse and they're trying to make use of the dragons for bad purposes or Carencia has been, you know, murdered a bunch of old Diosians. I mean, we're just a group of people. I mean, I, uh, are we going to go through with what the gunk man says and, and burn down the tree or, uh, just based on our decisions? Uh, Buck, you are probably the last person here among us to look at this group of friends that you have and say that we are just a group of people. When not long ago you had the fervor to try and summon and speak to a god. If you had that ego back then and you were misguided, you should bring it back for the right reasons. We are people who are here in this situation because we need to act, and if we don't, no one else will. Doesn't matter if we're not geared up or the perfect people to do it, we are the ones who know that we have to. The Underthrown Society are just people. They at least started the same way we did. They've just had more time. But chaos is not friendly when it comes to time, and that's what we're pretty good agents of. The humanoid blot turns around at that comment. Your yep. dragons are just people. This is true. And it turns around and stops. We are <gasps> here. That's actually a lot of weight to him saying that. That's interesting. Yeah. So where are we, buddy? Yes. Show me the mini map. <laughs> yeah. Show me the dungeon. <laughs> He, you see kind of a, a, a scenery of old kind of rubbly buildings and the humanoid blot holds out the ring for someone to take it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take it back. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> and it looks over kind of the landscape of rubble and debris. It seems as though there were some buildings here. This place was a home. Its name is lost to me, but its memories, their emotions, they stay. But those memories, you must see yourself. Ah, another one of these. Hey, how do we go about seeing these uh, ruined memories? We go touch stuff. The bright is, is eye <laughs> glows and leaves, uh, paints the land around it in red. You must open your minds. And you can feel in kind of the immaterial of your psyche something reaching as if to give it something. I'll open my mind. Heck yeah. My mind's yeah. empty. Yeah, let's <laughs> all walks right in. I'd like to open my mind, please. <laughs> and Fritz, Mr. Dungeon Master, I will no open my mind. No thoughts. Head empty. Woo. Fritz, do you as well? Uh, 
Mm, I'm just scared all, all of us being... Uh... It might be good to have one person on not yet opening mind to duty yeah. just in yeah. case something goes wrong. Yeah. We got Terrell in. Yeah, Terrell oh, and George. And, <laughs> and George. In fact, uh, George, why don't you open your mind and place a... <laughs> the other one, Gola. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay closed. I'm worried... Whatever they experience, they can tell me later. I'm pretend yeah. to open your mind, and then we'll <laughs> accidentally open George's mind, and they can the, the <laughs> monsters can take him into the bad place. <laughs> the shadow realm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, are you okay with me not opening my mind? If you so I'm wish. Worried yes. about your guys' safety. That's fine. That makes sense. <laughs> so the rest of you, the three of you, you feel the bright red eyes peer through you. And you see first flashes of your own memories rapidly appear in your vision, a blur of oh your, your childhood, your experiences, no. even the past recent days mixing in in a nonsensical collage. And oh. then the memories begin to morph into something unfamiliar to you and their pace slows down. You see the land around you, very much still Alinthi, but not the one you know. The trees grow, the ground shifts, and you find yourselves manifesting in a little hamlet with vague figures amongst you. Oh, no. <gasps> Whoa! This is some Legend of Zelda nonsense that we're doing our <laughs> own. Oh, <laughs> Not the brain fog. And you can see that the buildings are now in one piece, uh, formed untouched, very similar in architecture to the ones that you've seen in the ruins below Pelitrios. Mm. All the while, the voice of the Prabha speaks into your mind still. This place, I remember, but you must live as we did to see. It was a village of agriculture, farming, and art. One of many. Live as its people, and you may peer into their lives as if they were your own. I'm gonna tap the lady next to me. And this is yeah. going to be a skill challenge. Ah! Oh! If you so wish, Fritz, you may join them, or if you want to sit this one out, you can. I, I'm i just really scared of everyone being in the dream dimension and not waking the fuck up. I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, I if, think you guys got this. All Welcome right. to the Shadow Realm. What's then the it shall be the three room? of you on this skill eh. challenge. Boop. So mm -hmm. go ahead and roll initiative to see who will. Oh boy! What order you can go. I um before this happens? Yep. Can can I use my feature? Oh wait, never mind. We haven't taken a long rest, so I can't use it on either. Oh, of us. I think I've used it. It has all. been a very nonstop few sessions. Yeah, we have oh, not. We have that not, roll um, could have been a seventeen. Oh shoot! Initiative, initiative, initiative. Yeah, initiative. Oh, I didn't. Okay, click this on is my just. To, that's okay. Here, let me. Okay. I think I my can D twenty bounced off the side of my screen. It's not fair. I can press it again. They can just change <laughs> yeah, it yeah, to yeah. eleven. This is just. It's not. <laughs> it's not consequential. It's just a order. So it's the principle of the thing. Yeah. The immaterial. <laughs> I threads, would like the twenty one. <laughs> yeah. The immaterial threads of this long gone village are weak, but certainly enough to pull. Uh, for one to pull, if they can uh, draw upon the theorized lives of those who once lived here. The spirits before you appear as vague humanoid figures, uh, miming gestures akin to one living their life amongst the village. Use your skills to live out what you believe to be what the life of a civilian would be here, in order to tap into the ghostly remains that lingers, and see for yourself the memories of the village. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I'll. I will. I'll definitely be starting with perception. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Perception. What are you trying to perceive? Um, any sort of nuance. I'll, I'll take kind of like a little weak, crutched mosey around and look at all these um, people as they go about their days. If there's anything that stands out to me as culturally unique or strange or. Um, is that kind of what we're looking for? Am I missing the point? No, a that's bit? a Just drawing. That's a valid way to discern what they could be doing. Uh, like, it could be you trying to live out and mimic what the villagers are doing, or kind of pretend that you're amongst them, or just perceiving what you think they're doing and understanding better what they're doing. Okay, then yeah, in that sense, I'll look at what everyone around me is doing. Note the discrepancies between their culture and ones that I'm familiar with 
existing or that I've been a part of. And if I see anything that is strange or unique, any hand gestures, any actions that they take, I'll try and like think on them, incorporate them into myself. Okay. Yeah. Think. Give me a perception think. at what is it? Oh. You have exhaustion, so would it be at disadvantage? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll, no. I'll, I'll do a new, I'll do a new double roll. Yeah. Eleven. Mm. Okay. Mm. You try and kind of mimic them and fail. The vision's too blurry. And I'm going to need you to make a wisdom save. Okay. So the failures in this will not end the skill challenge, but it will pain you to be peering so far back in time. Hasn't he suffered okay. enough, DM? <laughs> no. He's no. dying. W- First you out. take away Ryuk from him, and now this. <laughs> Listen, he made a deal with the devil. He knew what he was getting into. That's true. Okay, you are going to take two psychic damage. Too bad. <laughs> Keel's over. <laughs> hey, you t- are you unconscious? How much HP do no, you have? No, I, t- I took a long rest, and I did a couple oh. HP. So I- I'm at 25 out of 51 right now. Oh, okay, okay. Buck, oh, yeah. your turn. Everybody in every society needs, like, farmers and farmhands. Is there, like, a, can I, like, help out? Is there anyone doing, like, any farm-related activities? Because that's what I did before. Our, our yeah, that trip. could either be a nature or survival, I think. Okay. If you yeah, if you think that yeah. would track. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm bad at both of those, but I still, <laughs> I still try. Ooh, okay. now I want to, can I use my, I, but I got a lucky feet. You do have a lucky feet. Thing. You can try it again. I'll use my lucky <laughs> feet. One of your three lucky yeah. dice. You traded your fancy coin for that feet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so it's actually a 12 and 12. <laughs> All right. Wow, above a 10. That's good. That's good. You attempt right? to imitate the movements. And although you are unable to kind of fiddle with the nuances, you start to get the hang of it and are... Uh, transported into the body of one of these figures and kind of see more solid silhouettes of these people. And you actually see someone you're familiar with, Buck. Mm-hmm. This is... My my old Deosian wife. <laughs> <laughs> my this... wife from old Deosia. We've Although... been indexing the ex-wives from zero this whole time. <laughs> Although the face seems to flicker between this strange silhouette that doesn't line up with the face back and forth, as if it is trying to associate it with the closest thing that you know, you see a fearbold woman with gold eyes. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Seems Uh to laugh and chuckle at your poor attempts to farm. I can't believe you have such an obvious type. Do you have is, a daughter? So Hold on. <laughs> is, is wait, so mom? so am I am I this person no, or am I seeing you're this person? You're seeing this person who is kind of like chuckling and laughing along with your attempts while their vision flickers back and forth between this and another like form that very much doesn't fit her. And you hear and you hear the Prabhu's voice echo in your mind. Like you, I had loved ones, partners. Their comfort was fleeting. Can I like reach out to touch to see if she's like actually there? Like, is that, can I do When that? you reach out to touch, you are pulled out of this body and you see the figure that you once were in the mind of touching. And that image of that person vanishes and they return to their abstract silhouetted form. Hmm. It seems that whatever this vision was, was drawing upon the closest uh, the closest similarity that you had in the memories of your own. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, that can be my turn. I don't want to explore that further right now. <laughs> Lara. No, we don't have time to unpack all of that. Uh, well, I did want to check out the one that was closest to the tree, but it looks like that one got dibsied. Um, oh, sorry. I just moved towards one. I didn't know if that was <laughs> no. It's okay. Oh, okay. The, the movement is whatever. I thought you got moved there. No, well, I just picked. I just picked one to move by. Okay. Um, well, the Prabhath mentioned that this was an agricultural area, like a farming town. Um, I know I'm supposed to be dealing with the ghost people. I am deeply curious at like what the ecological situation around here was, and that is a very big tree. 
<laughs> yeah, what was your guy's main export? <laughs> yeah, uh, how how did you do like crop rotations and shit? Uh, I am kind of tempted to before I try and get up close and personal with a ghost to um, try and get a better look at these sort of ephemeral plants and trees and stuff. Okay, um, if that's okay. Do you think that would be a nature check? I would love for that to be a nature check. All right, check. you may roll me a nature check on the plants. Okay. If I could justify a medicine check, that would be ideal. It's the only thing I have that's higher than a plus four. Okay. Okay, with an 18. Yeah. You look over the plants and you are transported in to uh, another one of these people similar to what Buck did. And you <laughs> are inside the body of a farmer picking. And you note that these are very old world, very primitive, very traditional plants that are not you using any sort of magic to cultivate them. They're done by hand, physically. And despite this, they seem to be growing very well. And alongside mm -hmm. you, you see that there it seems to be someone kind of admonishing you, giving commands uh, while you are following them. And you see someone that you're familiar with as well as oh, the vision boy. of the person flashes and morphs back and forth between this visage, this silhouette, and someone you recognize, Shemaya. Oh. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And you hear the prophet's voice again. Like you, I had teachers, mentors. Their counsel was useless. Prophet's been going through it these last few thousand years, it sounds like. He is a oil man. I don't think like, he's not... He's Sadly. clearly not been doing great. Word. No. Um, I don't know if this would be deception or persuasion narratively. I have the same bonus, but I, I want to genuinely walk up to one of the ghosts, kind of trying to appeal to them as someone who lives here and just say, like, I'm I'm lost. Can you tell me where I am? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, you can give me a persuasion because uh, okay. that's like a half lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is okay, true. Okay, not bad. 17. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, rogue. Tasty you, plus eight. You ask this person for help and assistance, and you are actually transported into this person you're asking and see yourself, the, the place where you once were, mm -hmm. as a person that you recognize. Oh. One of your lackeys, mm. Claudio, <gasps> asking for assistance as you are in the body of the person you are asking and seeing past their little shenanigans. And you see little bits of memories of shenanigans the both of you getting up to as you were able to catch on to their bullshit and uh, having mm. a merry time causing shenanigans around the town as well. Okay. Meanwhile, you also hear the voice of the Prabath. Like you, I had followers, retainers, a people. My loyalty could not save them. That's kind of trippy <laughs> to ask for help and then become the person you're asking for help from. God. Symbolism. Yeah. Buck. Oh, I don't want it to be my turn. God, this is so depressing. <laughs> um, I, uh... Skipping out was a good idea. <laughs> Can I, like, go into, like, the inn and, like, see, you know, is, I, I don't know exactly what to do, but if we're living the lives of people, can I just, like, try and get a room at the inn and see if, like, there's something, like, relevant to that? Yeah, you can. Uh, what do you think uh, that would be? In terms I don't of know. Um, uh, maybe, can I just use, like, insight to try and, like, look around for, you know, to try and get a sense of, like, what's going on? Yeah, you can. I'm gonna use my oh. luck skill. <laughs> Do it. Use your luck. Oh boy. Because uh, you just uh, you basically just spend uh, one of the die. I can only do it three times. Yeah, three um, times a day. Yeah. But you like, and you just like choose which of the rolls I want to use. Yeah, yeah, I think so. As long as you don't know the outcome specifically, but now that we know the DC. Okay. Yeah. You look around to try and get a gauge of the situation around. And although, Fritz, you are not in there, you actually hear a familiar chuckle, a hearty sailor's laugh after a nice mug of ale, but you don't see anything. But Buck, you see something. You see a certain dwarven man 
sitting at the bar, chatting hey. with an Arakakra girl, having mm. a laugh, and exchanging stories. And you hear the Prabha's voice again. Like you, I had family, guardians. They could not protect me. And that is going to be the end of the skill challenge. Oh, I wanted to climb the tree. <laughs> S- scamper, 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 scamper. <laughs> I'll walk out and then join the back with everybody. You do so. And while you do, I'm going to apologize ahead of time that there is a <laughs> cutscene in this session. Wh- uh, what? Just due to the nature Shit. due to the nature of the story and what is needed. I apologize that um, it is going to be a very sit and listen. I don't like doing those kinds of sessions. Um, but if uh, I could have just a bit of patience. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm so excited. I've never I'm gotten so, a cutscene I'm, in a yeah, I'm like game so for. excited. I'm like, no. <laughs> yes, I know that's one of the cardinal sins of D&D is the cutscene. Uh, as long as you <laughs> ask, have, as long as you have consent. Yeah. yeah. One of the few times. So, as you guys see through these visions and have the flickers of the closest equivalence of these experiences that you have in your own life, you see two figures become almost clear as day, almost physical. You could reach out and even touch them, maybe. But, uh, of course, they are just figments of your vision. And you see them approach the center of the town by the well. Boop. Two figures. Mm-hmm. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, 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 zoom. So, your vision clears, and the once ghostly village seems to fully form into people clear as they would be if they were living beings in the material world, and all of them draped in ornate, vibrant, colorful garbs with golden threaded trim, and all of them <gasps> cyclopses. Oh. And among them, two people stand out. One, in what seems to be dressed in royal jewelry of some kind, very similar in design to the bracelets you found uh, from one of the ruins word. It looks to be a male cyclops of royalty of some kind, a gold shiny mantle on his shoulders and a crown in the design of a lotus. And uh, as he passes by, as as he passes by his people, uh, they all kind of bow to him gently uh, while he waves them at ease. And walking beside him here, let me show you the portrait. Yes. There he is. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> Le Prava. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wonder who this other guy could possibly be. <laughs> and walking besides him, a dwarven man in more basic and practical garb with slick back hair and well a well-groomed mustache and hefty sideburns. Mm-hmm. And they begin to converse. And you hear their voices echoing about as if they were in a large flat room and the dwarf speaks up i cannot thank you enough for taking our humble people in with open arms uh, these past few years truly i hope our tree can uh, give uh, back a little bit of what you've given us and the cyclops royal replies it is of no trouble to us we welcome any and all who may share in our lands but uh, pray tell master Ol- uh, master olivarus uh, how did you come across such potent flora, uh, a keepsake from your time as nomads? The dwarf seems uh, distracted for a moment, almost completely ignoring the question as his eyes wander over the various people before meeting with the Cyclops. Hmm? Ah, ah, the tree, yes. Well, uh, it truly is a marvel what you come across uh, on your travels in the, in the continent. <laughs> uh, and about a minute of silence passes before the dwarf pipes up again to the Cyclops. Uh, say, good Prabhath, you never answered my question those months ago about your special little, uh, uh, gift. I presume you've had enough time to mull it over? And the Cyclops closes his eyes, uh, his eye, <laughs> his sighs, <laughs> then... Me trick to close your eyes. ...looks down to the dwarf. Yes, I think I owe you an answer after so long. I, I must apologize, Master Orivalis, uh, but the dragon's form is not a power to be used lightly. The dwarf turns mm. his whole body to the Cyclops, and his demeanor shifts to agitation. Uh, so you would damn us to the dangers of the wild, would you? The Cyclops puts both his hands on the dwarf's shoulders. The dwarf just bats them away and takes a stomp back. 
and the Cyclops tries to calm him down. Please understand, it's not a matter of trust. The dragon's blessings must be internalized and truly understood, respected before it can be used. It's not a matter of whether or not I want to, for my people have taken a millennia to truly be in control of this power, and even such, we live in fear of it, for to not would be foolish. It's, it's merely for everyone's safety, including that of your people. A misunderstanding of that power can lead to grave, devastating consequences, and my people's history are a testament to this. We can only comprehend the powers bestowed by gods as a fish would do currency. It's a thing outside our realm of- and the dwarf interrupts him. The realm of mortal existence, blah blah blah, I'm so tired of your excuses, Prabhath. And the rest of the village goes quiet, watching the two argue. The dwarf leans in to whisper to the Cyclops, What happens to my people, and heavens forbid yours, is on you, Prabhath. And the dwarf huffs and stomps away from the village. Then the village, uh, the vision rapidly shifts again and then stops. It's another day and the ground shakes. <gasps> mm. Some gift. The ground begins to shake. The Cyclops villagers are running about, gathering belongings, gathering loved ones, running out of their houses, riding away on their mounts. All the while roots are sprouting from the ground, wrapping themselves around the people from their feet, up their legs, all through their body, until the top of their scalps are covered. Then the Cyclopses, in almost an instant, are transmutated into roots, trees, and for every five that do, one root will shift, shake, break apart the bark that lines the outside and burst open, leaking a black, oozing liquid with a chromatic shimmer in its place. It's the blot. All the while, soldiers clad in armor very similar in design to that of the Alinthi Royal Guard corrals and attacks those who attempt to flee the area, pushing them and closing them into the cage of roots and black fluid. And at the command is the ancestral dwarven man. The visions shift again, further in time. The village is now long abandoned, for the people that once populated it are either dead or transformed. And you see one man on his knees, the Cyclops in royal garb, as he silently weeps. And you hear the Prabhat's voice from the blot, once again in your mind, the power of dragons. Alinthi wished to recreate it. They failed. The blot was a convenient opportunity against us. And when the dust settled, my people, the Daurung, were no more. Alinthi was all that remained. Treachery had been committed, lives had been wasted, and justice is absent. The vision fades, and you are brought back to the material plane where you see all the aftermath. You're returned to the material plane. Hmm. I'm glad you guys are all right. I'm getting a bit worried. So is every piece of the blot your people? The blot, the roots, the tree. They God. recreated Can... our magic, perverted it, used it as a weapon. To strengthen the tree that they already had. Can you speak to all of these blots? When I speak with them, it is like dreaming. It is hard to understand and remember. But if you gave them all a vision of the same place, do you think they would go there? The Prabhat says nothing. It seems he's unsure. Hmm. What are you thinking, Word? I'm thinking we use the army that they gave us to take them down. If this is something they don't have explicit control over and that they've been stealing from this whole time, 
it's only right that we work with it in any way we can. Justice is a worthy goal, but I worry at how deeply the tree has infiltrated the infrastructure of this place. Its existence appears to be an aberration, but if it is not restored, it seems that it will kill Ilinthi itself. You see the Probeth, like, the kind of body of the Probeth gets a little bit larger. The eye starts to brighten and emit a light that was never Alinthi's concern with us. An eye for an eye. Is that how you view it? It's only fair. I like to say two eyes for an eye. That way they it's can't find fair. you. It's not fair. We've inherited quite the nasty situation. There's no truly fair way out of this. We do what we can. We use what we have to undo something wrong. What? Do you... I don't think you understand what you're asking me to do here. Hmm? This could risk the people I love. The people that all of us love dying. And we'll be going through the exact same thing that the Prophet has. This is generational trauma that we are just passing on to the next. Well, is that really a way to solve this? That depends on what would happen. When it's over, we can do something different. When it's over, we when won't it's over, we might as value. well be dead. All right. We don't yet understand the totality of the situation. We've learned what happened. Now we need to learn what must be done about it. There's a we possibility. Don't we don't know everything. For one thing, we don't know what the tree is. I'm thinking the exact same thing. We've been told our entire lives that the, the tree was essential to protecting the natural balance of Alinthi, but I think this kind of clears up that, if anything, it appears that the tree is an aberration, and it doesn't necessarily belong here. I, I, I don't exactly know what to believe anymore in terms of what it is that tree does for us. But at the very least, I'm not sure that completely burning the whole thing down is going to be the best thing for Linthi. I mean, Fritz is somewhat right. I mean, people rely on it, don't they? Well, people sate it. That's not quite the same thing. If the tree is not fed, it drains life from Linthi. When framed in this manner, it seems less life-granting and more parasitic. Something that must be sustained with the hearts of dragons is not exactly a natural staple of the, of the circle of It's a of divisive life. tool. It stands in the center, but its power is divided into these different settlements. It keeps people apart. It needs to go down in some way. Well, what we've just learned is that Elinthi, as we know it, has been sick for longer than any of us have been alive. We've identified the heart of the infection, but we don't know what will be left behind if we destroy it. But it wasn't always that way with the tree, right? Well. Is there a way to separate the old and the new and keep them separated instead of them combining like they are now? To the best of my knowledge, the only way to get away from the new is to make something newer and make it old. I don't know if the tree was ever wholly beneficial. Certainly far longer way in history than, than any of us have any hope of uncovering. It would have been in the days of Old Deosia, which as we've learned over and over again, is deeply hidden historical record. I'm gonna walk over... Oh, I can't move myself. Oh. No, I did the wrong thing. I'm character. gonna walk yeah. word over. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna walk over to um, the one of the roots, the petrified roots, and kind of knock on wood and say, for all we know, this thing only looks like a tree. Sorry for me to be skeptical, but it's hard for me to want to trust someone who multiple times has attacked us and attacked innocence. I understand justice. I understand wanting revenge, but to harm innocence in the way doesn't seem like justice, really. I question if they think any of us are innocent. I just... An eye for an eye only leaves both sides blind, and I don't think that is... Really the That's best why outcome. you take two eyes first. The Prabhath, Wait, we discussed this. The Prabhath speaks up. My concern is not 
of what solution comes after the tree. It is a monument uh, created of my people's suffering. I think the concern is that by excising the parasite, we end up killing the host in the process. I mean, we all still live in Alinthi and we want to go back to our lives when this is all done. Is that still something that can happen once this, if this, if we take care of the tree, as you suggest? Is that something that can happen if we don't? Would my people on the island be in danger? I don't think we're going back to Satya the same way that we left under any circumstances, Lyra, but what I'm saying is, is I just want to make sure, and I think Fritz is kind of saying the same thing. I mean, we, we all agree we don't want to hurt people, innocent people. I mean, that's what happened here. I, I just don't know how necessary the tree is, if they've made it necessary with the, with the pain that they've inflicted, and if it's going to be worth it to cut, to cut that out. Regrettably, they say our actions have led to the death of numerous innocent people. It's unavoidable. It's something that has to be genuinely taken into consideration or else you're not looking at the whole picture. It is impossible to take action without causing harm. And here I fear that we are mitigating the results of an ancient harm, the true extent of which cannot be known. The only people I've ever known who don't hurt people are the dead ones. I think that there are many reasons to think the tree should fall. I think that we don't yet fully understand the tree or what we can do to destroy it in a way that does not, as we put it, kill the host. Aren't there magics out there, some kind of spell or something that can tell us what we're not supposed to know? Some scroll, maybe, about the tree? I don't know where the voyages came from that brought this thing here, but there has to be something, magic or otherwise. Well, it seems as though our friend here is able to talk to us based on the power of the hearts, and we're still missing one heart. If we're able to get you all five of them, are you, would you be able to more easily answer our questions or at least help us figure out what to do? I think the problem is less what the Prabhath can and can't do and more what the Prabhath knows. The tree was not part of his kingdom. It was brought by the nomads who founded Alinthi. It was a gift, which means he would know somewhat where it came from. Well, we went, we saw them discuss, and hmm. they were very secretive about where or how okay. they had acquired it. The Prabhath speak, uh, speaks up. The eye glows with each syllable. The tree is my people. Well, we certainly know the tree ate your people. <sighs> it, yeah, it consumed them by, like, that's what the consumed mm -hmm. them, turned them into the blot. I mean, I'm not every cannon burger I've ever eaten. If the, wait, if the tree is your, oh, if the tree is your people, then it's become less of that dwarf's and more of yours and you would have more control of it than they would. Mm. You. We might, if this tree is people, would we be able to reason with it? In the same way that the blot is people. I'm not entirely sure that that tracks. Yes, and we've been able to communicate and reason with them. We're talking to the blot right now. We're talking to the Prabhath right I, now. I think I think what the Prabhath is asking is less a is more of an act of mercy and justice in saving his people from the inevitability of. And then I just like kind of point to the blot, and then I kind of look over at Terrell, and I, I don't think this. I think the longer, the more that the, the tree stands. This is the existence that they have to endure. More than that, the tree is artificial, what? and its role in Alinthi, perhaps the result of, well, as we've just learned, an experiment, a monstrous accident, an active and attempted seizing of power. I question if the current status quo is in any way intentional. It seems to me that a tree that must be fed hearts every ten years, lest it vampirize the life from the earth itself, is not the sign of a successful magical experiment. The, the Prabhath speaks up, you young bird folk, at Fritz. Mm -hmm. I had pupils like you. 
your hypothesis is an optimistic one that I would wish to be true. And then he looks to the rest of you. What you do from here is of your volition. Whatever that may be, you cannot stop me. What will you do? The tree must fall. Time has been strange. Perhaps more solutions lay, but I have made my choice. I have my quest. I do want to know if you see the tree as your people and if you're seeking vengeance for them, I don't understand why you would see it fall other than change. I, I would agree with you, but it doesn't seem like you're of sound mind in this thinking. Perhaps not, but it would bring me peace to know that thing made from my people's suffering would be no more. I believe we're seeing this in a different way. We look at the tree and think, perhaps the people transformed into this still reside in it in some way. Perhaps it can be changed or improved, fixed, reasoned with. What we've witnessed is something devouring a civilization. The people are a part of it in the sense that we are what we eat. I think it is within the Prabhat's right to wish to see it dead. Then I agree. The salvation of Alinthi is our primary concern, not the vengeance for your people. Not even justice, I regret to say. And, and I hate to see the comparison, but it is our situation. Everyone here lies in shackles. Their wrists are red and rotten. I would rather break the shackles than avoid seeing them in an injured, broken state. Yes, unfortunately, the healing process is often painful. I wish to know more about the tree, but it is entirely possible that I will conclude the same thing that you have. The tree must fall. The Prabhat's eye dims a bit. It seems that uh, all have come to a conclusion about where they stand. And so he starts to leave the scene. And before he seeps into the grass as he slowly sinks down, uh, he turns back, whatever your choice, I will be waiting. I'm not giving up. Okay. Your optimism is comforting. And the blot seeps into the ground, vanishes. These things we're up against, they're stronger than us. They have the dragons, and they very likely know where we're going. We need to become powerful. I don't know how to do that. Would we even benefit from going to the last heart, or we should, should we go see our friends, ask for help? The other dragons, maybe we can speak to them first. It calls into question whether there would be any benefit in acquiring the final heart. If the act of revitalizing the tree in and of itself feeds the problem. I think there might be a reason. If the hearts can revitalize, they most likely can also destroy. This this part of the magic is more towards the Prothus side. They would understand it a lot more than probably Alinthi does. Well, I'm not sure about that. It seems that the dragons we know are a far cry from the ones the Prabhath was familiar with. Just... I don't like the idea of leaving that power left for someone else to grab. A single heart left could just re redo this all again. I think it's the a good idea that we at least hold on to them. The way I see it is this is a, a weed growing in the roots. I'm sure Buck is familiar. I've done some gardening myself, but there are invasive species that make themselves known and alive and impenetrable by planting seeds deep in their roots. We need to burn well, out those seeds, and I think they're the hearts. I, th I think you you both are correct. I mean, what reason would they have for taking away our, pr our 
a pilgrim status if we, you know, I, I think once they recognize that we recognized the issues, they didn't want us to be pilgrims anymore, and they tried to take the hearts from us. I mean, that's what they wanted, right? I think it's, I think it's, whatever is going on here, these hearts are tied to the magic of old Deosia, and I guarantee they're going to be instrumental in figuring out how to deal with the big tree problem. So I think it's imperative that we, I guess, hey, try to get the last one if possible, no matter how hard that that is. I want to know more about dragons and the tree and anything that we can find about old Deosia. It's all very connected, but there are many forces at work trying to prevent us from understanding them. Well, I, I mean, to an extent you're in luck then, seeing as where we're going next is Aguna, which is, as far as I understand it, the number one place if you need information on something. Today well. speaks up. Yeah, it's a very, uh, very accomplished scholarly place. A lot of very powerful mages and sorcerers study there. I'm sure. Uh, the people that read books. Yes, well, it occurs to me that seeing as we've just seen the lengths to which the Underthrone Society will go to meet Kate, to guarantee that this information never sees the light of day, I would be wary of any place that cultivates such a high scholarly reputation. Surely the information they have cannot possibly be the full story if it's been allowed to continue to exist. Then we'll go in a back alley and ask a magic nerd for secret history. <laughs> I mean, I think I, I think the towns we've seen have indicated that not everybody is as bad as Trevisetta when it comes to this sort of thing. Not everybody's as bad, but they have been kept in ignorance. I, it's no it's not that hard to bury stuff. information. It's true that uh, whatever officially licensed books may be unreliable, <laughs> considering what you've learned here, but um, as Word said, you do have to get powerful, at the very least. It might be useful for that. Are we... Um, let's go, go steal ahead. magic items. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Jedi. Mm -hmm. I... What happened on your last pilgrimage? You've been through all of this. Of course, our pilgrimage has been very different from yours. I, um, I just want to know as much as I can. Well, it was mostly uneventful. We traveled across, got all five dragon hearts, went to the tree and performed a very secretive ritual, uh, something akin to becoming a dragon, as I understand it, uh, that involved the five hearts giving it to the tree, and it seemed to revitalize it. And they seemed to be very hush-hush about the uh, the finer details of how it's performed. They have priests and mages and sorcerers alike to make sure that it goes down without a hitch. And uh, uh, Wait a minute. I, I might have been missing a, a little note on this whole thing. So when we collect these hearts and bring them to the tree, are they different hearts every time? Well, depending on the dragon, yes. Um, I did not know that. I thought we brought them all back. When oh, we no. Them. When, uh, as far as uh, Uncle uh, told me, Uncle Elias, he told me that a dragon picks their heart as something significant, something very important to them, uh, something that is inherently tied. But the dragons, they don't die every single time, do they? Not as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so you've you've met the same dragons multiple times? Yes. Her but uncle. Their heart breaks every time. After they retire, but maybe this is hindsight bias knowing what I know now, but they always seemed different. Wait, there's a different dragon every time? Uh, no, not every They're time. Different heart. I mean, oh. whenever a dragon retires and a new one takes its place, they pick a different item to become the heart, and they require the previous one to have a sort of transference of power and magic into the new one. Aye. But they seemed different after that transference? Yes, the old dragon themselves, after retiring, they seem fine after the ritual of transference is done, but whenever I visit them again, it's like they're different people. Then perhaps we should avoid giving the hearts to the dragon, no matter what we choose. I'd like to meet one of the retired dragons. Well, I could give you directions to one that lives in Aguna, perhaps, and nearby. They don't live in Aguna proper, thankfully, uh, so that might keep you safe a bit. I think that's worth our time. I think before we approach Aguna, we should make a few decisions about our approach. Trevisetta has declared us public enemies. 
I, who knows how fast word travels from there. Odds are, if you've, if you've uncovered some conspiracy, they're probably figuring out how to go about painting you as the villains they believe you to be, so as to not raise suspicions. It's, n yes. it's no surprise that a lot of the provinces are not quite friends to Trevisetta here in Olinthi, certainly not Higemura. Which seems to give us two possible options. That might give us time. Travis said is not going to want to look weak by, oh, we let some pilgrims get information and get out. I don't know if they will want to reveal that we know their secrets because people who don't like Trevor Setta are going to come looking for those secrets that we yes, know. Yes, they'll surely yeah. come up with some plausible reason why they found it fit to strip us of our pilgrim status and run us out of town. That's true. If they could, they could. They'll be the putting media. a target on their own back. Which gives you a bit of time while they get their story straight, as it were. Yes, Aye. so it might be in our best interest to approach Aguna as if nothing is wrong, rather than in any sort of stealth or disguise. If we appear in our official capacity as pilgrims, acquire the heart as quickly as possible, do our various researches, and then disappear into the wilderness before Trevisetta has time to get their trousers on, we might be able to pull this together. And, w and what if they get their trousers on and the, the dragon's not willing to cooperate? I mean, are, are we gonna, we're gonna fat a dragon if, if we have to? Yes. I suppose we could, but I do question the requirement to acquire the fifth heart, seeing as it's increasingly unlikely that we're going to sacrifice them to the tree, them to the tree. Today. Yes, what is it, Word? How often do pilgrims die on this journey? Hmm. Mm. Not very often. We are usually welcomed very well and fed and... But in the wilderness or anything, is it uncommon? Well, in all my years of being pilgrim, there was only one, and um, it was more of an accident, really. Oh? Uh, young lass named Rhea, she um, was a bit in over her head, and uh, well, the wilderness of Alinthi being, you know, fed by the tree and given a lot of power often spawns very powerful monsters, we'll say. What if the people think I'm dead? Um. Well, it's not... That would give us a leg up. Not out of the range of possibility. That would give us a secret. I suppose it would allow you to maneuver more stealthily. We're in dire need of secrets right now. So you suggest that we go in bright and shining in official capacity as pilgrims but with one fewer member I've gotten remarkably good at hiding in the shadows well, I think that might be in our best interest Aguna does love their stories you would garner a lot of sympathy from the public uh, I mean you're not going to get any uh, pushback from me if we're going to kill word but um, <laughs> no. uh, you walk over to me with big blind like, Let's get this we gotta make it look convincing we gotta kill word I mean, wouldn't that's it wouldn't it be easier for Lyra, because they can turn into an animal? I can only do that. Are you insulting my ability to hide in a city? Did you know no. that there are sewers? You fly around a lot. There's a place underground. Word, I say this with the most love in my heart, but I would love to keep you within eye's length, because I do not know what you are capable of. <laughs> Well, I do know what I'm capable of, and unfortunately, espionage is not my strong suit. I think that it might be better served. <laughs> we, uh... Okay. I know what Word's capable of, and for that reason, I think he should stay away from us for at least as much as possible. <laughs> just uh, just okay. kidding. But uh, I, uh, the, the, my issue is we've got all these people that are here with us. I mean, we're going to walk into Aguna and implicate them. I, I just... Hi, I was actually I... going to bring that up. Uh, Jade speaks up, and she gets off of the cart. Uh, dot JPEG. Yay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Get off the cart, don't you? <laughs> Seeing as uh, things could go arse up any moment now, I think perhaps bringing these good folk, including the guard, it seems, to a safer place uh, just in case things go down might be the right route. I do know a few contacts, including a very feisty fay in the Circa Forest that can get us through there and straight to Tigamura quickly. If you'll allow me, the I think that would be wise. Do you, do you need we the card? We wouldn't want to slow you down. JPEG. We will miss the card. Dot JPEG. Yeah. Oh no! You, they can. You can keep it. It'll. You'll. Oh. You might need it. Uh, be yes. foot. Also, don't speak ill of George. He's a good old boy. George just like 
nods his head like really quickly <laughs> as if like rattling it. As if the DM <laughs> forgot what George's voice was. <laughs> no. I don't it sounded like a George. So just it's to make me, things clear, George. We go, we're going to Laguna, and we're going to pretend that word is dead. Yes. Yes. I believe that's the current draft of the plan. But I word's not so. dead. Word's not dead. Yeah, Crucially. I'm not dead yet. Very important. Word is still alive. Uh, I do want to know, I think we should, like, out of game, I think we should meet with the old dragon first, since she's not yeah. in the city. I I'd like to be there for that. Mm. It's on the way. You said she's out, she's on the, like, is it in on the, the way? Is it, it is could it be like, on the other side. Yes, so. it is on From the way. Jade, it seemed on the way. Yeah, yeah Jade on the way. marks on your map a sort of little Ooh. town, uh, kind of like on the bridge to Aguna. And mm, kind of gives you directions and gives you a name, Esperanza. Really? Ooh. Huh. I yeah. heard finger symbols clapping when you said that. <laughs> Esperanza. She is apparently an elven woman of 120. That's pretty sprightly for an elf. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. actually. Wonder why she retired. <laughs> Is it Aguna or Laguna? Aguna. La oh, okay. okay. Oh, Aguna. I was about to be wrong. <laughs> I was thinking. I was, thinking I was about Laguna, to be so confidently know? wrong. <laughs> it's okay. Laguna. All right. Da, 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 da. So just to make sure I understand the plan, because we've had a lot of information in a short time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to on Killer. head to Aguna. Um, yes. And we are going to see the old dragon, and then just before the old dragon, word is quotation marks disappearing, or not, how not, are we? Not quite. Minor minor fixes there. So we are headed to Esperanza, okay. which is on the outside of Aguna. It's a hamlet that is owned by the town Laguna. We're going to talk okay. to her for a moment. I want to be there for that. But once we head into the actual Aguna area, word is going to shave off to the side, and I'll just be stu doing stealth, probably in high prox proximity to the party. Um, SpongeBob okay. and Patrick well, opening my, coffin. Yeah. My concern Ooh. is yes? if we enter Aguna with four of us and Aguna sees three of us, aren't they going to be a bit confused about where the fourth went? Well, that's no, I'm why Esperanza is a separate that? place. Well, yeah. uh, we go to Esperanza first, and then I leave between Esperanza and Aguna, which is. Uh, Esperanza is not in Aguna, she's near yeah. Aguna. We'll still is be a I'll, I'll show you I'm Esperanza what? is the city. Asking, the city, it's not I'm, the lady. Wait, wait, wait. What I'm asking is once we get into like actual, like, the main bit of where we're going, like the small town and then there's the next town, right? The big one, mm -hmm. the yeah. big, big city. Um, what I'm saying is, how are you going to explain that there's only three of us at the gates of them? Because then it'd be like, oh, the pilgrim says four. Wait a minute, there's only three. The map uh, ain't math. The explanation is going to be that some shit went oh. down in the vicinity of Trevisetta and re no, regrettably we lost our rogue. Okay, so I am is, understanding. Is what, yeah. what story are you guys coming up with? Like, yeah, did I that's die what I'm trying fighting to work political <laughs> officials? or? I don't think that, the thing is, I think the vaguer we keep the Trevisetta situation, the better. Uh, yeah, because it's too, too, it. too hard to talk about right now. <laughs> yeah, or, or we can be like, yes, we were sent on a fool's errand by the Lord of Trevisetta and we lost our rogue, but we managed to get the dragon heart uh, oh, and yeah, none of us yeah. are happy because that's all true. That is a true anyway. thing mm -hmm. that happened. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna lie because they cannot admit like, yeah, they found out all of our dirty secrets about horrible blot experiments on living people. Uh, and then they took issue to that and we tried to have them assassinated and they ran away. Like they're gonna lie to make us sound like the bad guys to try and convince the other cities that they shouldn't harbor us. But like, we have probably at least a little while before the word gets out so we can, we can, <laughs> we can get in. But basically the <laughs> worse say... they look, the more work they have to do to make us look bad, the harder it's gonna mm -hmm. be for them. And if we just okay. show up like, yeah, we had, it, it was hard, the Trevis and and uh, uh, political officials used us to try and carry out a hit and it didn't go great, but we managed to get the, the dragon heart. Boy, that town's pretty crazy, right? I wouldn't trust anything they say <laughs> anyway. My, uh, my deception's really high. Maybe I could convince them how I died. <laughs> <laughs> this is the downside of you being the one who's playing dead. I was oh, murdered. Okay. This, is, this is our friend, Gerd. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could write them a note. Oh, wait. No, I have that. <laughs> okay, well, uh, so I think all are in agreement that, um, like, the plan is you guys are going to go to Aguna, uh, and these lot are going to take a shortcut through the Circle Forest down to Tigamiura. And uh, with this plan, Jade kind of rubs her hands together, and she casts a spell on El Coco, and he 
grows in size. Oh! oh. oh. Yeah. Yes. And the oh. allies kind of get... Oops, that ghost is not supposed to be there. The allies <laughs> get on <laughs> top of him. Terrell and get off of Butterscotch right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Jade hops on the front to take the uh, proverbial reins via his ears, his floppy ears. And uh, she <laughs> looks to you all. Well, uh... I guess this might be potentially goodbye for quite a while. And is there anything, any last few things you guys wish to say to any of these NPCs before Ooh. they go? Uh, where, are they, where are they going? They're going to Tigamura. They're going to Tigamura. Oh, that's the tiny place south of yeah, Torellin, right? The place that started with an adventurer's guild in the- The like adventurer's guild, we love that place. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll get up to uh, uh, Torellin and I'll just say, um. Uh, th there's a there's a healer um, in the in the town that you're headed to. He's he's uh, married to the guy who runs the Adventures Guild. Um, I think he should be able to help you out. Just um, just take care of yourself, okay? His name's Ika. Oh, I'll I'll try. Thank you. We're we're gonna we're gonna figure this blot thing out, and and hopefully by then we come up with some sort of cure for all this going on gesturing to his face <laughs> <laughs> well uh, whatever may happen I guess uh, the dangers of gambling eh <laughs> yeah you've got no idea uh, um, well uh, I'll uh, uh, we'll make a final bet on whether or not uh, we, we both make it out of this I I'm gonna bet on that we do how about that uh, I'm going to stay out of that one. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay. Uh, well, it was good seeing you again. Good to see you too, Buck. And thank you again. And I'll just, like, walk away. I'll walk up to uh, Gola and George. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find Gola's portrait. There he is. Oh, how is it, Kinsman? You're both alive today because I see greatness in you. <laughs> <laughs> Where once you were adversaries, now you are friends. <laughs> Gola looks over to, to the guard. <laughs> Go now to, what is it? Uh, to Gimura and become great. I'll be back there to check on you soon <laughs> enough. Oh, there's a big smile on Gola's face and he kind of elbows the guard. Oh, he's quite inspiring, isn't he? <laughs> And he like hobbles away with like clearly a limp leg. <laughs> no, go ahead, Joe. Do George's voice. You know it. <laughs> George is like, mm-hmm. Yes. George Not is uh, <laughs> having the weirdest day of his life, and he's not gonna say anything. Uh, oh, and yeah. <laughs> the lot Coward. ride off south towards Tigamura through the Circa Forest. On a doggy. Perhaps unfortunately, uh, not to have another duel with uh, um, La Destructura for quite some time, sadly. Oh, don't say that. No, I'm sad about it. The next one will be so awesome, though. <laughs> yes, you guys are left alone. The meandering blot that remains in this old Deosian town. All that remains. I would recommend we don't make camp here, even if We've come to an understanding with the Prabath. The Wandering Blood may still attempt to attack us. Mm. Regrettably, that's right. all, I can, mm -hmm. all I can think about right now. Uh, and he sits in the cart, just kind of like... <sighs> Would you like me to drive and you guys get some rest? Yeah, you know how to talk to the horses. I can sure try. <laughs> All right. So you guys get back on the road. Yeah. And head towards Aguna. I would say that you have quite a few hours of travel if you guys wish to mm. do or uh, say anything along the way or, or wait until you make camp. I would say you get about this far along the road before it starts to get dark. 
At some point, I want to say to, uh, uh, I, I guess, like, explain to Fritz everything that we saw, like, in the, um, like, because mm. I don't, because Fritz didn't get to see that, so just, like, explain, like, mm -hmm. like, everything. I don't, we don't have to role play it, but. Yeah. Um, right. Oh, yeah. Info dump. So I don't know if, based on that, if Fritz wanted to ask anything, but I'll explain that. I'll also explain that I saw, do like, Doze and. When, I, when you said I saw a, a, an Aarakocra girl, was that Fritz who I saw? Yes, it was. Okay. It was trying to be, but it was a Cyclops at the same time. I think That's... what it is is that we were we were seeing visions of people mm. we didn't know, but the Prabath was kind of like, you know, your frame of reference is, you know, these characters were like this to me. Um, I was about to say, have I met like, Buck as a kid and have no idea? <laughs> I, I think it's kind of akin to um, when you look at something and you notice that the blind spots in your eyes start to fill in information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that because it's a psychological spell. Yeah. Psychological I like that. Yeah, I like that way of looking at it. Can we see the tree from here? Yes. Off in the <laughs> distance, very large, very covered by the atmosphere, in like a very dim blue hue. I spit at Corencia. <laughs> Wait, that's an tree. acronym for Ren Quirkia. Just oh go God. to sleep. Just go to sleep. Word must be delirious. He thinks he can read. read. Yeah. He's, trying to, he's trying to read. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know what an acronym is. <laughs> Cannot conceive of it. I've gotten a tattoo of the names of my enemies on me, and it's just like Corencia <laughs> spelled very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Orange chicken. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, you guys, do you guys make camp, or are you gonna try and push through the night? I think we I camp. think we, we should make to, camp. We yeah. Make <laughs> camp. <laughs> We're <laughs> desperately need sleep. I'm surprised we didn't. We even did any more traveling after yeah. visiting the ghost realm. <laughs> right. We went into the Danny Phantom ghost dimension oh. we need to take a nap right now. <laughs> So, do you guys make camp probably somewhere off the road, I presume? Just like... Uh, y yeah. Yeah, not to be spotted. There are quite a bit of hills and small mountains around that could kind of hide your line of sight. So you can hide fairly easily in this area, kind of the western highlands. Boy, it's mm -hmm. convenient that my, my druid subclass ability lets me make our camp basically impossible to spot. Oh. Nice. Yeah, Hearth that... of Moonlight and Shadow. We've, we've only really used it for flavor, but it means uh, we all get a plus five bonus to stealth and perception checks, and light from open flames within it can't be seen. Oh, so, very beautiful. Be we've, used, we've used that before. We've used it like before. It's just we, we've never been hiding from an evil empire before. So Well, we mm. were we, we used it when we were hiding from, uh, what's his name, that one guy, who you're the guy who gave us the cell phone? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The handsome little man. Yeah, the handsome man. But yes, this will probably be good because it would be in I, uh, tr uh tr what the fuck is the evil empire? Trevisetta. 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 Yes, yeah, there are too many T names today. Uh, really it would be in Trevisetta's best interest to be hunting us down. So if we can avoid that, that would be nice. I would also like to remain dead, according <laughs> to uh, any travelers that pass by the road. Mm. Yeah, stay in the cart. I don't want to move. <laughs> that sounds good. I can't believe that you can move. I mean, you're really banged up, buddy. You should take a nap. My willpower and my strength extends beyond my tiny muscles. Okay, but you're, like, you're bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I raise my arm and clench a fist, and there's like a pop. <laughs> Ow. Here, just just lay down here. Like, Just use this as like a blanket yeah. right here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm tucking word in. in the Aww. Buck, will you, Swaddled like will a baby. You tell me a story. Um, I I guess I can. I mean, I still have this book. Uh, <laughs> oh yes. Uh, this Speaking of the book, Lost in a Drift. I, uh, By Chingles McBallister. Yes, Chingles <laughs> McBallister the Fourth. I made a portrait from him. Unfortunately, you didn't run into him one uh, again. But I'm gonna show Aww. the portrait just for yes. the sake of it. This we is must how see Chingles. Yeah, we did. We saw you used it. Oh, already. did I? Okay, my mistake. Yeah, you used it. Never mind. I no. think, yeah. Uh, yeah. You that did. was the guy at the party. Yes. I don't remember yeah. him looking like this. Well, I didn't have a portrait guy. for him when you, he was at the party. You absolutely. It wasn't when he had a party, but at some point later, you've already shown us gotcha. this. I know okay. that for a fact. Sorry, it's been a year. I think so. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it's uh, here. Let me just. It's, I'm uh, very when old. we left, when we left off, uh, Aldian, the, the the captain of the the King's Mill, and it looks like so. I, oh, I forgot I had written in the Boss Mill over the. Uh, yeah, this of here, course. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. I'm gonna just try to put as many words boss in, but you gotta pay attention so that you can hear when I do that. You, it's your guess as to whether or not the author actually included the word boss, or whether I'm doing it, okay? I would say oh, he's that already asleep. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Wow, he must be tired. <laughs> he's just, he's, he's already boss too many times. He's already he's asleep. Okay, it. all right. I close the book. <laughs> okay. So, are we going to do watches, or is there something you guys want to do before you do watches? I'll do watches. I'm just changing my spell list, or rather, yeah, adding things to my spell list, since I think we leveled up and I have more spells than I did at the beginning of the day. Yes, you are level 8. I'll, I, can do a, I can do a watch as well. Mm -hmm. Who will take first? I can what, go first. I, oh. <laughs> All right. Puck, you want to take second? Yeah, I'll take second one. And then Fritz, shall you take I'll, third? I'll take third. I don't mind taking a double shift, so we're concerned. I think we only need three, so yeah, we you should only be need fine. Three. Okay. Are you sure you guys don't want me to take a double shift? No, there's no need. I mean... Yeah, yeah it's it's fine. You do whatever you want, but you should get enough sleep. Yeah, none of us are going to be deprived of a long rest. Okie dokie. Okay. First watch. Lara, give me a perception. Sure. Ooh, okay. You, oh, wow. knowing that you are hidden from typical sight, you do see that there are, like, a few figures up in the sky keeping their best to try and uh, keep themselves hidden. It seems as though there's some, something scouting the area. Hmm. They Morgan. look humanoid. They look like they are in robes, possibly some sort of wizards humanoid in robes flying mm -hmm. they seem to huh. be going back and forth possibly patrolling possibly scouting looking for what it's hard to come to the conclusion but Does it are, look they like they're... are they winged or are they t-posing <laughs> <laughs> they are not winged they possibly have casted fly on themselves or some other magical some manner spell. of levitation uh, does it look like they're passing over the road or like they're like circling an area Cir uh, kind of Scanning back and forth, kind of like a, a lawn mower, like mowing the lawn back and forth, just making sure to cover the area, including over your camp several times, but they don't spot anything. Mm. It oh. seems, and they, they move on from you. All right. Hopefully that's fine. But otherwise, your watch goes without a hitch, but you now know that there are some wizards flying in the sky, scanning for something. I'm tempted to try a, a beast sense so I can get a closer look at these guys through a bird or something, but I think I will not tempt fate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Uh, shall we do next watch with Buck? I'm up. Uh, perception check? Perception. I'm going to use my last <laughs> lucky dice. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> I would like to use my three instead, DM. Thank you for that. I will use my three. Oh, baby. I don't have to use the one. I can choose which one to use, and I'm choosing the three. Yeah, so it's a beautiful night. The stars are oh, shining. Shit. They gl they glisten with the golden glow of a, a very nice, pleasant memory. In you don't really notice much, Buck. Oh, uh, what a beautiful night. I think I'll take a little nap right here. Oh, boy. Oh, time to wake Fritz up for... <laughs> and then I'll wake Fritz up for their thing. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Fritz, you're awake for the third watch. You may give me a perception. I am awake. That means I get my long rest. I forget what my perception is. Did that roll it? Ooh, oh. Oh. Very yeah, nice. it did. Whoa. Yeah, it did. <laughs> you keep an eye out on uh, a few more mages similar to what Lyra had saw and uh, are able to t discern just from their body language, they're looking for you. Oh. 
you're also able to discern with your eagle eyes, almost literally, that they are wearing robes akin to Trevisetta. These are not Agunan mages. Oh, they tried to get us on the way here. You also notice something a little less uh, disturbing and dangerous. The two horses have cuddled up next to Word to keep him <gasps> safe. They are kind of almost corralled around him like a like a protective barrier, noting that he is like very hurt. And they are like laying, but with their heads perked up t- to keep watch this as is long. the raw power of horse snakes. That oh, you, t- you took precious. care of them when they were hurt and now they take care of you when you're I hurt. Did. But I'm thankfully, add some stuff to yeah. the fire to make sure the horses stay warm. Thankfully, thanks to Leira's uh, special feature to keep you guys completely hidden, you <laughs> have dodged an encounter with the mages of Trevisetta hunting you down. Yay! <laughs> and we get the effects of a long rest? You get the effects of a long rest. Word, yes! you are down to two levels of exhaustion. <laughs> Wowie zowie. It is good to know that, uh... They did not see us. Ooh. I I just realized um, I wanted to. I got blade mail, and I needed a chance to attune uh, to it. Attune to it. Can is that done now? I would say yes. That is uh, takes up one of your three attunement slots. I don't know how many you used up. I think I only have used the one, unless the yeah. I think I've only used the one. I don't think okay. I've used. I have a shield, but that uh, didn't require attunement if I. I can't remember. I, I still have Arzir's shield, by yeah. the way. Um, I never gave that back. <laughs> oh. Um, but I guess, what does the blade mail look like? I'm wearing armor now under the under the. Okay, uh, so the blade so mail. spiky. Let's see. I have an image because this is a Dota 2 item. What? Yeah, this I'm kind of wearing a Dota 2 outfit. <laughs> so it looks kind of like akin to scale mail with a leather collar, and lining the leather collar seems to be some curved daggers that kind of come out like in a flared fashion. Uh, here is the image. I'm going to put it in image share. Oh, gosh. Uh, wow. That might be hazardous to your poncho. Uh, <laughs> now, it's okay. I, I will say that they're able to retract at your will, so they don't stick out all the time, but whenever you activate them, that's what they do. They just kind of kind of come gotcha. out like that. So cool. I'll, like, come out as if I'm coming out of a, um, a dressing room to, <laughs> to, to reveal <laughs> the, that I'm wearing this. Thing. I just thought I'd need a little bit more protection while we're given the... Um, general everything about what's been going on. Very nice. Uh, are those mages gone in the morning? Oh yeah, they're gone. Okay. Clear skies, it seems. They learned how to cast invisibility overnight. Invisibility and <laughs> fly. I think they can't do that. Also, word, you wake up kind of in the midst of your two horses that have like covered you in this little like den I give them both forehead kisses to know I'm getting up. Oh. Oh. They whinny a little bit and get up along with you. Nice. We all eat together, except we eat different things. <laughs> <laughs> wow, friendship is truly beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> who, who could have guessed? Uh, yeah, I just kind of look around. Good morning, all. Mm. Good morning, word. Good morning. Feeling slightly unlike death. That's good. I'm gonna report to the others that uh, the gods that Leo saw. Yeah, they were Trevor Setta. Yeah, I saw those what too. Now. Yeah, I saw. Them. <laughs> yeah, let's let's keep moving. We got and uh, uh, is um Esperanza is that is that the name of the place or the woman? It's the, the place. The dragon. That's the name of the dragon. Oh, it's the dragon. Oh, what? It's the Oh, it's the, the former the, dragon. So, we the knew former that. Dragon. The name of the yeah, the former dragon. It was not clear to me, and I know that yeah, Logan. Was no, saying, I, I reinforced yeah. it the other Mine, way. Yeah, so yeah, then, yeah. It, is her Hamlet named? Is it just like a little subsidiary? It's just uh, the Coca Cola Light. It's called Bridgetown. Light. It's just a little town on the bridge. Bridgetown. 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 Yeah. Love it. It's just a, a small little hamlet south of Aguna. 
to Bridgetown. Thank you. I suppose it might be a good sign to that Bridget Trevisetta o. is still attempting to surreptitiously assassinate us rather than simply turn law enforcement against us. C can I yeah. ask? Can, can I ask the three of you something before we go any further? Hmm? Are, are, are you? Is everybody doing okay? I mean, there's just been a lot that's been going on, and we're now bearing the weight of the entirety of a um, massacred people um, and the fate of the rest of Carencia uh, kind of hangs in the balance, uh, and we're, you know, kind of tugging at that string that could unravel the whole of, well, the kingdom. And so I just kind of wanted to touch base and say, are you guys doing okay? I mean, my identity's been ripped apart, and I'm at risk of losing everything I care about, but I like hanging out with you guys, so I'm <laughs> I'm having a good time. That's a very sweet word. Yeah. To be honest, I'm just happy we're finally getting some answers. It's nice to know what we're trying to do for a change, even if it does require a certain shifting of the worldview. Fritz? You know, just going to a tree to burn down, not knowing if it's going to kill everyone that I love, but uh, I'm finding solace in the fact knowing that at least I'd be able to save one of the people I'm very close to me. And I just look over at Layla. We're going to learn more about the tree before we make any decisions. None of us want to destroy this place. We just want to heal it. And sometimes that process can be painful. I just don't Good want old to be the cause of pain for the people I love. It, you won't be the cause. Do you understand? This is something that's been being staved off for hundreds if not thousands of years. Even if we're the ones to end it, that doesn't make this our responsibility. This was an act of evil done long before any of us were born. We're simply making it right. Our entire nation has been stabbed in the heart. The act of removing a dagger is painful, but it's better than leaving it. L let's just assume, obviously, for the for the sake of argument, that everything's gonna go fine, and we're gonna we're gonna be able to, you know, figure this whole out, bring justice to Diosia, and we're gonna set Carencia on the right track, and Word's gonna get to kill whoever it is that he wants to kill, and I have a list. <laughs> let's say that that all happens. Um, I kind of had this idea back when we were just couriers. For, um, that by the time this was all over we were going to meet back in Satya and just kind of have a uh, you know just kind of blow this whole thing over at a tavern somewhere job well done our lives back to normal I kind of understand now that we're not going to get back to normal uh, that's we're past that point I think we all agree but I'd still like to I'd still like that final night together with just the the four of us in a bar if that's still a possibility when this all ends. Buck, we'll find and we'll build a new normal. And we'll have drinks there. I think I'd like that. Alright, it's a it's a it's a date for all of us then. <laughs> Word blushes. Oh <laughs> I don't know. Kicks does. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a date, I'm bringing my friends. <laughs> <laughs> You're at risk of marrying me. <laughs> <laughs> Friend day! All right. In kobold culture, this is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, drinks, after a, <laughs> drinks after a life-ending adventure. My, my, Buck, how forward. <laughs> I'm a kobold, so you're all at risk. We'll start with you and work around. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I take it you guys are heading uh, towards Bridgetown, then. Yeah. Yeah. Let's All right. go see you Bridgetown. Follow along the trail, the road, mostly uneventful. Um, not a lot of importing or exporting goes through the road up to Aguna. Um, but as your cart.jpg travels up the um, not very steep mountain, uh, you have some time amongst yourselves, uh, and it climbs and climbs, and as you reach the summit of the, the little mountain over uh, the road to Aguna, you see it off in the distance. The place of learning, of magic, and of sky islands. Whoa! What? 
Were you giving me Sky those. Islands? Is it Christmas Sky already? Islanders. <laughs> Skylanders. We got the one thing I need. Skylanders. Just off in the distance, <laughs> the final province and final stop before heading towards the life tree itself. Oh, no. That is going to be the place where we call the session today. Oh. Hey, boss, God, I have one quick question. fucking beautiful. Uh, those roots, would those happen to be attached to that thing we just pledged ourselves to destroying this session? I don't know. No, oh, definitely you would, oh, No way would you do that. that. It would be way you too poignant. Do. That's a different magical tree. This I'm is a sure. different big tree. B big old friendly tree. Not built on the backs of 10,000 dead. 